Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that there's a lot of AI, or if you prefer machine learning, built into the current version of Photoshop. What you may not know is that there are a lot of other applications that utilize machine learning as well. One of those applications is Affinity Photo 2. In today's video, I'm going to compare the machine learning that's in Affinity Photo 2 to that which is in Photoshop by using both applications to select and clip out the subject of a photo. Because when you do subject selections in either app, those apps are using AI or machine learning to make the selection. Now, before I begin, I do want to mention very quickly that I have no affiliation with Affinity Photo at, at all. They're not paying me to do this video. I am an affiliate for Adobe. In the description of this video, I have a link to both companies. You could check out their applications. Also, I have a link to my website. I have a lot of free stuff on my website, including a lot of keyboard shortcuts. They're downloadable PDFs that you can print at home. I have them for Photoshop, Adobe Bridge, Camera Raw, um, Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC. The list goes on. There's a ton there. Again, I'll have that linked in the description below this video. Now, let's start out in Affinity Photo. And we're going to start with this relatively easy image. This is the model in front of a seamless paper background. This is a relatively easy image to clip out the subject from. But before you could take advantage of the machine learning that is built into Affinity Photo, you have to kind of turn it on. To do that, you're going to go to the Affinity Photo 2 settings. On a Mac, it's under the Affinity Photo 2 menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. Either way, go up to Settings and then go to the second option on the left, Machine Learning Models. And you'll see there's the section Segmentation. You're going to click Install. And then where it says Saliency, you're going to click Install there as well. And then once you do that, you'll have the machine learning ready to go. Now, I want to make a selection of the model in Affinity Photo 2. To do that, go up to Select and then down to Select Subject. And you'll see it will take a second, but we have marching ants around our subject. Now, we need to refine the selection because right out of the box, this isn't going to be perfect. To refine the selection in Affinity Photo 2, go up to Select and then down to Refine Edges. When you do, you'll get this refined selection dialog. Now, a couple things to be aware of this dialog. You have a couple of different previews. By default, it's going to give you this overlay preview. Wherever the red is, that's what's going to be clipped away. And you'll notice it didn't do such a great job around her hair. Now, it works. red works pretty well on this image, but on some images, the red might not work as well because well, if you have she's wearing a red shirt or something like that, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to find the edge. So you could go to a different preview. You could try the black matte or the white matte or black and white or even transparent. But I'm going to stay with that overlay. I'm going to keep the default settings for the sliders. Then you have a number of different adjustment brushes. The one you're going to use most often is the matte brush. With the matte brush, you just brush over the problem area and it will use this machine learning or AI to refine the selection. So again, it's the problems around her hair. So I'll just take this brush and I'll brush over here. Now you don't have to be careful. You don't have to get between the hair strands or anything like that. Just brush. And you can see then it kind of thinks for a minute and then it refines the selection. Now what I found is it works best if you do little spots. Like don't try to do big swaths all at once. Just do little bit by little bit. It takes a little longer to do, but you'll get a better selection. And you can see that it's slowly but surely getting rid of that blue that is between her hair. So you just keep doing this. Also, I want to mention very quickly that um, all of this is done on your computer. Nothing is sent up to Affinity Photo servers uh, to be done up there. So it's all done on your machine. So um, you don't need an internet connection or anything like that to do this. We're going to get in here. And also, Affinity Photo isn't a... Um, a uh, a rental like you don't you not pay monthly for it you just buy it I think it's currently in the U S sixty nine dollars and you own it and you can see it's pretty much a Photoshop clone so we'll come in here and we'll get around her hair a little better and I get this problem area over here and you could try like I did that and I'll go sometimes to preview and I'll I also go to like the black mat and see what it looks like and you could see that it's standing out a little more there where the blue is maybe a little in here. So a little work, and I refined her hair pretty well. I think it looks pretty good. Then we're going to output it to a new layer with a mask, and we'll click Apply. And you can see, once we do that, we have pretty much a perfect cutout. So 
pretty easy to do in Affinity Photo. Now let's do the same image in Photoshop. Now I could, as I did in Affinity Photo, go to the select menu and here I'd go to subject or I could go to the contextual taskbar and click select subject here. But I don't want to do that because with Photoshop, you have the option to send the image up to Adobe servers and have the selection done there. If you do it that way, it takes a little longer, but you'll get a better selection. But in today's video, I want to, call, I want to compare apples to apples. Since Affinity Photo used my computer to make the selection, I want to use my computer to make the selection in Photoshop. Now, by default, Photoshop will do that, but I changed the default settings of my computer so it doesn't use my computer by default to make the selection. By default, my computer will send it up to Adobe servers. So I want to change that. So I'm just going to grab a selection tool by tapping the W key on my keyboard. And when I do that, I'll, it will select one of these three tools. It doesn't matter which tool is active, though, because whenever any of those tools are active, you'll have this select subject box, and next to it you have this little downward facing carrot. Go to that, and you can see I changed mine to default to cloud. I'm going to change it to device. And then I'm going to click on select subject. So we're going to, again, get a similar selection. You can see I have the marching ants going around the model. And here we could refine it here as well by clicking select and mask. Now, you have different views here, just like Affinity Photo. Uh, you could go to the overlay. I'm going to stay with the black. Black look fine. All right now, there is something in Photoshop, though, that isn't in Affinity Photo. It's this button here, Refine Hair. Whenever you're clipping out someone who has a head of hair like this model does, just click on Refine Hair, and you can see that it improves it quite a bit. Another thing that Photoshop has that Affinity Photo doesn't have is if I go over here and click this checkbox, Decontaminate Colors, you'll notice that it improved her hair as well. Now, if there was still a little blue coming through, there is a similar brush to the matte brush that is in Affinity Photo in um, Photoshop. It's called the Refine Edge Brush. It's the second brush from the top right here. And you could use the bracket keys like any other brush, right bracket key larger, the bracket key smaller. You could, let's say brush on a problem area and let go in it. Just like Affinity Photo will improve that area. But just clicking on Refine Hair and Decontaminating Colors, I think did a fine job. We're gonna, I'll put it to a new layer with layer mask, click OK. You can see that I got an equally good clip out in Photoshop compared to Affinity Photo. It was a little easier in Photoshop because I just really had to click two buttons that, you know, refine hair and decontaminate uh, colors, the checkbox. Um, a little more work in Affinity Photo, but it worked just as well in Affinity Photo. Now let's try something else. Let's go to an image that's a little more challenging. Uh, we have the subjects here in front of a busier background, so it isn't as simple as a seamless paper background. Now, we're going to uh, make a selection here, and again, I'm just going to go up to Select, and then we're going to go to Select Subject. And you can see that uh, it didn't do such a good job right out of the box here. It didn't select the groom at all, and it didn't select like parts of his hand and parts of her bouquet. But we'll go to the Selection Tool. It's this tool right here, and you can see that it, too, has a keyboard shortcut of W. You can see that... Um, Affinity Photo 2 is really kind of a clone of Photoshop, so a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are the same. And maybe someday I'll come up with a downloadable PDF of Affinity Photo 2 keyboard shortcuts that you could download from my website. Maybe I could do that soon. But anyway, we have this active, this brush active. Make sure that you're adding. Uh, so you go to this mode and make sure you're clicked on add. And we're going to get just a slightly larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. We'll come in here and we'll make sure that we select all of the groom and get his hand and make sure we're selecting all of her bouquet and get his hand and hand there, right? I think that looks pretty good. It's kind of missing part of the, um, the leaf. I could get a really small brush, really tiny, and try to get this leaf in there. It's, it's hard. I, I'm going to refine that. I'll use the refine brush to try to get that in. We also have this part around his, um, get a larger brush, around his boutonniere, isn't selected. Okay, uh, that looks pretty good. Now, when you do have a selection tool active in Affinity Photo 2, you'll have a refine button. Clicking the refine button is the exact same as going up to select and going down to refine edges like we did before. So we'll click that refine button and we get this refine selection dialog. We have the matte brush. And this part right 
around his like lip there doesn't look good. And I mentioned this leaf over here. So we could come in here and try to get that leaf. I'm not sure we're getting it. And you could try like I change it to let's say the black mat. You could see maybe a little better. And if that isn't working like this, this specifically this matte brush isn't working, what you could do is go to the foreground brush. And this is just a regular brush. Wherever I brush, it will brush in. So we're going to keep that part. It's like a plus brush. This background brush will subtract from the selection. The feather brush will go around the edges. You could brush around the edges and feather it a little bit. But I think that matte brush is fine. And we've got to get right in here between like a little space around his lips and overall i think the selection looks pretty good as it is we're going to output it to a new layer with a mask and we'll click apply you see we clipped them out pretty good now her hair might look a little funky here but um trust me once you put this in front of a different background it will all blend in perfectly it will look fine just from experience with photoshop i know that's a fact so that is an excellent selection and it wasn't much work to get there. Now let's go over to the current version of Photoshop and go to our image here. And we're going to again go to this little carrot to drop down and make sure that I'm using the device. And we're going to select the subject. And you can see right out of the bat, this is a little bit better of a selection than we got in. Let me get off the uh, object selection tool because that's making that overlay up here. But you can see it, it selected the groom. It didn't select part of her bouquet though. So make sure we're using an add brush with the click quick selection brush, add brush. And we'll come in here and make sure we're selecting all of that. Didn't select part of that leaf that's sticking out from her bouquet. Again, I could try to get this really small brush. Let's see if I could get a selection there. Maybe. All right. But overall, I think it's pretty good. We don't have any marching ants left in the middle, I don't think. So it's good. So we're going to go up to Select and Mask. And we're going to go to the Refine Edge Brush. And I could get this part right between his lips there. And I think that is pretty good. We'll go to Refine Hair and see if that helps improve their hair at all. Didn't really do anything. We'll go to Decontaminate Colors. That did something a little bit. Kind of refine the edges around your hair. That looks pretty good. I think overall that actually looks very good. Uh, let's take opacity down. Yep, I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to output it to a new layer with layer mask and click OK. And there is our selection from Photoshop. And you can see it's pretty much equally as good as the selection I got in Affinity Photo 2. And they were both easy to do in this case. Uh, whereas with the easier one, it was easier in Photoshop. I just had to, um, in the Select and Mask dialog, click on Refine Hair and click the decontaminate colors dialog. And once I did that, I was able to get a perfect selection. And here, um, the refine hair didn't do anything. Decontaminate colors did a little bit, but I still had to come in with the refine edge brush and kind of fix in like specifically right in here, maybe a little bit around that flower, but it looks good either way. So that's the machine learning or AI that's built into Affinity Photo 2 to make selections compared to the same AI machine learning that's built into Photoshop. And again, in the description of this video, I have links to everything. You can check it all out. And again, I'm not affiliated in any way with Affinity Photo 2. I think it's a great app though. It only costs $69 and you own it forever. So you don't have to uh, rent it or pay monthly payments for it or anything unlike Photoshop. So that's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.